we will start to read from Saints of Bengal. And the story is about Lalita Darcy. Actually, we started with this story last time. So, Lalita Dasi, or as he, she, actually, he was known. Oh, okay. So, he was known as Jai Gopal before, uh, after he got named Lalita Dasi. And Lalita Dasi actually was in Saki Bhava. And last time we nicely were hearing about that uh, Baba Mahashaya or uh, Radha Raman Charandas Dev told her, and I will read this, just this part again, and then we will continue. He, he told Lalita Dasi that Radharani has, out of her infinite kindness, bestowed this sublimest and sweetest bhava upon you. Retain it carefully and be happy. Vesh, or outward form, alone, so I mean, outward form alone will not do any good. You have to live according to, the, to this bhava in your thoughts, words, and deed. In Saki Bhava, one cannot even for a moment think of one's own happiness. You will have to convert this bhava into Svabhava. That is, you will have to make it completely your own, your natural disposition. Until this is done, the bhava will not be permanent. The best way of doing this is constantly serving Radha Krishna according to this bhava. So this is nice how it was mentioned. Uh, in the same way, whatever is your bhava, we can approach it and uh, be in that bhava in our thoughts, words, or our actions. And the point is that through time, this bhava will become sva bhava, or it will become natural for us. It will become permanent. And that's our goal, that we live in that bhava. It is manjari bhava, or in this case, is saki bhava. So whatever is your bhava, actually, we should try to live by it until it becomes our natural disposition. So, because of this, our Jaya Gopal from this story got the name Lalita Dasi. We will continue now with the story. Lalita Dasi continued to serve as cook in the ashrama. Baba Mahaj Maharaj, or Baba Mahashaya, kept an eye on her, and whatever knowingly or unknowingly she made any mistake, he corrected her in a manner in which it served as a lesson, not only to her, but to everyone else in the ashrama. One day, he was sitting and talking to people at a place from where he could see the kitchen 
and the storeroom. He saw that a mouse was trying again and again to enter an earthen pot, but could not because its mouth, mouth of the pot, was closed. He became restless to see that and asked someone to call Lalita Dasi. When Lalita came, he asked her what, uh, what was there in that pot. She replied, it contains some rice obtained, obtained in bhiksha or begging. I have uh, kept it for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I see, said Baba with his face reddened with anger. So he was anger, angry. He added, if you must collect for tomorrow and the day after, where was the necessity of your leaving home and becoming a recluse, meaning like renunciate. So then a disciple said, today I got some extra rice in Bhiksha. So I kept the extra quantity for tomorrow. Lalita Dasi is not to blame. But Baba said angrily, Shut up. I do not want any explanation. You are all a group of bandits who have collected here. As he said this, he went to the storeroom and broke the earthen pot with the staff. Then he said, Whatever viksha you collect, and whatever comes to the ashrama, you must consume the same day or give away to the poor and the needy. You must not keep even a particle for the next day. If any of you does so, he will not have a place in this ashrama. Then, looking at Lalita, he said, Do you get this rice from your father's land? You get it in Viksha. It is the mouse's as much, much right as yours. Have you learned the lesson that one must not hurt any creature in any manner only to preach it to others. You are all the slaves of Kali. You must fast and chant Harinam throughout the day and night today. Tomorrow morning, you must bathe in the sea, then go for the darshana to Siddha Bakula uh, Gambira and Jagannath and circumambulate the temple of Jagannath three times before you return to the ashram and take your prasad but tomorrow everyone had to obey so They were very strict about this, that they need to spend everything they got in begging the same day. Nothing left for tomorrow. Whatever is not spent in ashrama to give to the poor. One day, when everyone in the ashrama had taken Mahaprasad and Lalita Dasi had collected the utensils 
utensils used in the service of the deity and kept them outside the kitchen, she began to wash her feet near the utensils, near the pots. Baba Mahashai saw her doing this. She felt ashamed and went and washed her feet elsewhere. In the evening, she suddenly developed severe pain in her right leg. At night, when Baba Mahashai returned from Jagannath Temple, someone in the ashrama told him about this. He smiled and said, Does she know why she got the pain? He replied, No, no one knows how she got it. Baba Mahasha did not say anything further, but he kept asking Lalita Dasi to do what she could without walking. He continued to do everything though with great difficulty. Two days passed like this. The pain did not subside. The third day at midnight, when uh, she was alone in her room and was not able to sleep on account of the pain, she said to herself, I do not know what has caused this pain. I must have committed some offense. She began to think what offense she had committed. Suddenly, the thought came to her mind that she had washed her feet over the utens utensils used in the service of the Lord. And Baba Mahashai had seen her doing so. What must be the cause of her pain, she thought. Surprisingly, as soon as the thought came, the pain be began to be uh, to disappear. The next born morning, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the next morning, Baba Mahashai called her. She went smiling, and Baba asked, "I see you smiling. Perhaps the pain is gone. What medicine did you take?" No medicine. The relief came automatically with the discovery of the cause. And Babaji said, could you discover the real cause? I think the cause was the washing of my feet uh, over the utensils. And Babaji said, undoubtedly, that was the cause. Mahaprabhu has asked you to regard even a blade of grass as superior to you. You should know that a thing used in the service of Krishna is far more superior. It is Chinmaya or transcendental. Lalita said, I know that, but I did not commit the offense intentionally. As soon as I realized what I was doing, I stepped aside. If I could not immediately realize what was the cause of the pain, 
you knew it because you saw me washing my feet over the utensils. Would you not point it out and save me from the agony? I suffered for three days. And Babaji said, if I had told you about this, perhaps you would not have believed. Now, whenever this kind of thing happens, you will be reminded of this episode and will begin self-exploration. There is no remedy for the suffering caused by an offense of this kind, except self-exploration and self-reproachment. So after some time, Lalita Dasi fell ill. She became sick. Another disciple of Babaji Mahasha took upon himself the task of cooking. Actually, I want to just little go back about this self-exploration and self-reproachment. How this is actually important in our spiritual life. Uh, that we should often ex do self-exploration. How do we act? How do we react on things around us? What, uh, uh, what is our connection with our Ishtadev? How it is activated? What helps us in this connection? What doesn't help us in our connection with Ishtadev? Are we doing some things that are blocking our connection? Maybe we are talking badly about some other Vaishnavas. Maybe we are doing some things that are removing our focus from our Ishtadev. So this self-exploration is so much important because we are not robots. No. We should do this because our spiritual life is alive and always changing and growing. So self-exploration is important. And not just exploration, but also we need to see how we can make it better. How our relationship can become more deeper, more natural, as we were reading before. How it will become natural for us. So through this self-exploration, self-reproachment, definitely we can do that. So, after some time, Lalita Dasi fell ill. Another disciple of Babaji Mahachai took upon himself the task of cooking. He had been earlier, uh, he had been earlier removed, he had been earlier removed from all kinds of service because he had displeased Gorahari Das Babaji Mahasha. So one other Babaji. Uh, the Gurudev. Ah, he was actually, sorry, Gurudev of, of Babaji Mahasha. Gurudev of Radharaman Charanda Baba. So he displeased Param Guru by his behavior. But be because he entered the kitchen and started cooking of his own, no one thought it fit to prevent him from cooking for fear of displeasing him. When most of the cooking was done, a big cat entered the kitchen. 
Baba Mahashai saw the cat coming out to the kitchen. He called Lalita and asked her to go and see if it has had eaten anything. Lalita Dasi went and saw that it had eaten part of everything cooked. She came back and said, the cat has eaten part of everything cooked. 40 kilos of rice has been cooked and corresponding amounts of uh, lentils and vegetables. What shall we do now with them? Babaji said, what else can you do? Since they cannot be offered to the Lord, you must bury them. Do you know why this has happened? The Lord does not accept the service of a man who has displeased a Mahatma or a Vaishnava. This cautioned everyone in the ashrama against Vaishnava Parad for the offense committed against a Vaishnava. So, yeah, this is important that we always act with respect towards everyone, not just Vaishnavas, towards everyone. And then we will have no problem that it will happen with Vaishnavas. One day, about two o'clock, when in the afternoon, when Lalita Dasi, Kusuma Manjari Dasi, and some other Sakis were taking Mahaprasad beside the kitchen, a cat came and sat near them. Lalita Dasi, who was already full of malice, or anger actually against the cat on account of the before mentioned episode gave it a slap on the face with her left hand the cat ran away crying baba mahashai heard it cry but did not say anything In the evening, Lalita Dasi began to feel excruciating pain in the left hand. Two days passed in agony, but the pain did not subside. When some people in the ashrama told Baba Mahashai about it and requested him to arrange for some medicine, he said, what can medicine do? If medicine cured all diseases, no one would suffer. She must do self-exploration and find out the cause. When Lalita Dasi was told about this, she understood that Baba Mahashai had again hinted at some apparat or offense. She began to explore what apparat she had committed. At night it came to her, it came to her mind that the cause possibly was the slap she had inflicted on the cat. The moment she thought of it, the pain was considerably reduced. The next morning, when Baba Mahashai saw, saw that she was at work as usual, he said, You seem to have been relieved of the pain. How did you get rid of it? And Lalita said, That day a cat came 
and sat before me while I was eating, and I gave it a slap. The moment I thought that uh, that might be the cause of the pain, uh, the moment I thought that that might be the cause of the pain, I began to feel relief. And Babaji said, yes, that was the cause. But Lalita said, but since the cat is regarded as inauspicious and prejudicial to the service of Krishna, I do not understand why it should be an offense to beat and expel it from the place of service. It was the same cat that spoiled the Thakur's bhoga that day. Could I therefore have caressed, caressed it instead of beating? Babaji said, Cat may be prejudicial to the service of Krishna, but should it for that reason be debared from the other Amrita of Krishna. This hungry creature came to you in the hope of getting a handful of Mahaprasad. But you gave it a slap and made it cry and run. How cruel! If in this ashrama also you drive it away like this, who will treat it better? Every creature is a servant of Krishna. If you ill treat it, will not Krishna be displeased? Do not the Shastras enjoin that you should regard even the smallest of the creatures as worshipable? If you do not do this, you have no right to call yourself a Vaishnava. So very nice. We can see here explanation how how we should treat treat every creature with respect. And we could see many examples where Vaishnavas would act badly towards dogs or cats because somebody told them, oh, they are unclean. Oh, if they come near your kitchen or they see food, this food cannot be offered anymore to Bhagavan, to Radha Krishna. So, because of this, some devotees were acting badly towards those uh, cats or dogs. But the point is that we, we should see that first thing, these are jivas, like us. Yeah, they are in those bodies. But they are not less worthy than people, than jivas that are in human bodies. Second thing is that even the Shastras, as here was said, that even the smallest of creatures are worshipable. worshipable. And we can see, you know, we know that in the heart of everyone, there are Radha and Krishna. So if we start to see every living creature in that way, then it's so easy to act with respect towards everyone. So let's try to see. And, and this is also one question for our self-exploration. Do I see in other creature, creatures Radha and Krishna? One good question to ask yourself. So let's continue the story. Once, almost everyone in the ashrama was laid down with fever. 
Baba Mahashaya was also unwell. But Lalita Das's condition was serious. Slowly, most of the uh, residents of Ashram recovered. But Lalita Das's condition continued to deteriorate. He could not even sit up on the bed. If someone made her sit, she fainted. But she was worried not so much on account of her illness, of, but uh, as on account of the being deprived of the service of Baba Maharaj, who was still unwell. So Baba Maharaj was also uh, not feeling well. She wept because of this. When her condition became very critical, a number of devotees from the ashram Uh, devotees of the ashram went to Baba Maharaj and said it appears that Lalita Dasi will not survive you must do something to save her Baba said she lives by service service of the Guru and the Vaishnavas since she is now deprived of service she is, for all practical purposes, dead. Every moment that she breathes, she experiences the pain of death. In this state, it is better that she ceases to breathe. You should bless her so that she is relieved of this pain soon. One day Lalita was weeping bitterly. Madhu Dada was always by her side and tried to console her, asked, Why are you weeping so much today? Are you feeling much worse? And she replied, What shall I say? I'm trying my best to leave my body. But everyone seems to be against it. I thought that, that Navadvip Dada would show mercy on me and take me where he is. He also did not prove helpful. Now, I do not know how long I will continue to trouble you all. Madhu said, No, Didi, don't say that. No trouble for us. But tell me what transpired between you and Navadvip Dada. And Navadvip uh, Baba, as they call him Navadvip Dada, or older brother, he actually uh, already left his body. Yeah. So Lalita said, Yesterday night, I was feeling very aggrieved to think that Navadvip Dada was so indifferent towards me that he did not even once appear to me in dream. As I was thinking like this, I fell asleep and saw that Navadvip Dada was sitting near me with his hand on my chest and saying with a sweet smile on his face, Lalita, what has happened to thee? And then I said, 
it is my belief. Sorry, uh -huh. I said. I said, Dada, you have gone. Also, take me away. I am in great distress. But Dada said with a smile, Live for some more time to serve Babaji Mahashai. If you come away, Dada or Babaji Mahashai will be very much inconvenient. I said, Yes, as if I am rendering great service to him. Instead of doing any service, I am myself taking service from him. You kindly have mercy on me. I do not I do not want to live as a burden to others. We want to be with you. But he did not agree. So therefore, I request you all to forgive my offenses and bless me so that I may leave this body and be born life after life with a body suitable for the service of your Prabhu, of your Lord. Then, as if she was going to leave the body immediately, she said, just now, I have no request, no desire except that the benign, benign and ever so merciful Prabhu gave me darshana once in my last moment. With this, she began to weep. Madhudada sat by her side and began to chant Harinama. Her body began to become cool. Just then, Baba Maharaj returned from Jagannath Temple and went straight to the room where Lalita was lying. As soon as Madhudada saw him, he began to weep loudly. Lalita Dasi was unable to rise and sit on the bed or say something. She alone knows what she said to him in her mind. Tears began to stream out of her eyes. Baba Maharaj kept standing still for some time. Then he said, This is what Nitai Chand wills. Let his will be done. And went. He went away. While going, he touched her right hand with the great toe of his left foot in such a way that no one else could see. Lalita Dasi said to Madhu in a soft voice, Dada, I had, I had prayed to Prabhu in my mind for, for kindly giving me darshana in my last moment. He not only mercifully gave darshana, but also blessed me by his touch. As she said this, tears streamed out of her eyes. Baba Maharaj went and said to some of his disciples, 
Lalita is going to breathe her last. You take her to the temple. They went running to her and saw that she was actually breathing her last. They lifted her carefully and began to take her to the temple. They had hardly gone a few steps when they saw that her eyes had become fixed and breathing had stopped. They thought that her last moment had come. As asked by Baba Maharaj, they laid her down before the Thakura. Before Takuchi. Himadava Das Babaji, the elder god brother of Babaji Maharaj, was at that time in the ashrama. He asked him and the other Vaishnavas to forgive her for whatever offenses she might have committed knowingly or unknowingly and bless her by placing their feet over her forehead so that she might leave this body and attain appropriate transcendental body to serve Radha Krishna according to her bhava. They did so. At this time, three Rajabasi Vaishnavas happened to come. Baba Maharaj made obe obeisance to them and asked them also to bless Lalita Dasi by placing their feet upon her head. At first, they declined, but when Baba Maharaj told them about her qualities as an ideal devotee, they complied. When they had done so, Madhava Das Babaji said to Baba Maharaj, We gave her the dust of our feet. Why didn't you? I believe that as soon as you bless her with the touch of your foot, she will be all right. Baba Maharaj said, You believe whatever she believes or not. Madhav Das Baba said, At the moment, there is no question of her belief because she is lying dead. It is my belief that will work. <clears throat> As he said this, he took Baba Maharaj by his hand near her. Baba Maharaj placed his right foot over the forehead and said, Jainitai, Jainitai. Immediately life came back to the dead body of Lalita Dasi. As soon as she opened her eyes and saw Baba Maharaj, she sat up. Baba Maharaj said to her, You are extremely fortunate. You had the touch of the feet of three Vrindavanasi, uh, uh, Vrindava, oh sorry, Vrindavanavasi Mahatmas. Their blessings have given you a new life. Make obeisance to them. Lalita Dasi bowed down to them and the other Vaishnavas. 
Now Baji Maharaj said, Look, you have committed an offense against the Thakur. Since he has now forgiven you, you should pray to him. Asking for Shakti so that you never commit an offense again. Lalita said, What offense I have committed? I do not know. Kindly tell me. Babaji said, Your offense is that apart from the bhoga that is offered to Thakur in the ashrama as a part of the routine seva, there are other foodstuffs that devotees give to ashrama from time to time. You give them to us without offering them to Thakur. Lalita says, Is that an offense against the Thakur? That is an offense against you? Babaji said, No. Anything that is given to the ashrama is meant for the Thakur. If we eat it without giving it, to the Thakur, we are thieves. Lalita said, but if someone gives something for you specifically, not for the Thakur, then? Babaji said, then also it will be stealing. The world in which we live is Thakur's. Anything given to anyone in this world is Thakur's, not Krishna's. Yeah? And Lalita says, But the Shastras say that the Guru and the Thakur are one. Then what harm if we offer something to the Guru without offering to the Thakur? Babaji says, Tattva, reality as it is, and Lila are different things. In Tattva, Guru and Thakur are one, but in Lila they are different. If you do not recognize this difference, then Bhoga offered, offered to Thakura is offered to the Guru. When Thakur had, has eaten, the Guru has eaten. There is no need of offering Thakur's prasad to the Guru. So this is if we do not recognize the difference. Yeah? But when it is different, of course, we offer it first to Radha and Krishna, and then we offer to our Guru. Then Lalita Dasi said weepingly, Prabhu, I do not know what offense I commit against whom. You should all forgive me and bless me so that I may not commit any offense again. On the third day, Kunja Dada, who had been cooking in the ashrama since Lalita Dasi fell ill, himself fell ill, so he also became sick. Baba Maharaj asked Lalita Dasi to cook. Lalita Dasi began to cook. Everyone in the ashrama was surprised. They said to Baba Maharaj, Lalita is still too weak. She does not have Shakti even to sit or move. How she can cook for 50 or 60 persons? Babaji said, Shakti is obtained neither as a fruit 
from the tree, nor does it drop like rain from the sky. Shakti comes from seva or service. When she engages herself in the service of Takura, Takura will give her Shakti for the service. This is exactly what happened. Lalita Dasi cooked. She did not feel any difficulty. The next day, God knows what came into Babaji's mind. He arranged for Jagannathaji's bog and Vaishnava seva in the evening. Kheer or condensed milk was made from 40, K, uh, 40 liters of milk and appropriate quantities of rice and sugar and a number of items were were uh, prepared. Lalita had to cook them all. About 250 Vaishnavas were invited. Lalita Dasi alone was asked to serve them. She made obeisance at the feet of Babaji Maharaj and started serving. She served them without feeling any kind of weakness or fatigue. Everyone was surprised to see this. Some hailed it as due to the fate of Lalita Dasi. Some as the result of Kripa Shakti of Babaji Maharaj. Just see. We still have more about this story. So maybe here, as it is finished, this part. So we can stop here. So just as I see who is here. Mm -hmm. So through this part of the story, we learn some nice things. Actually, in this part of the story, there was a lot of talk about Aparad. And uh, what is Aparad, actually? They call it offense. But how Aparad works? Aparad actually works in a way that because of it, our focus changes. And because of losing our focus, we lose the taste for seva, for our connection with our Ishtadev. That is why uh, we should focus on doing good. Because if we are focused on avoiding mistakes, we can usually make those mistakes. So it was interesting when my wife, Mahababa, she, she wrote, for example, there are like 10 offenses and she wrote them as 10 blessings because you can turn them around, you know, in positive manner. So totally opposite than what we shouldn't do to make it what we should do. And it's much better focus in that way than focus all time on the offenses. Sometimes in our spiritual life, actually, when something happens and our connection become, becomes weak or we don't feel it, 
we should do that self exploration and see what what do we do in our life that can be the cause of this what is our relationship with other Vaishnavas or with Gurudev? And yeah, did something, some apparat, you know? In a way, I did something that takes me away from our connection. So this self-exploration is important. And I also liked the part about the cat, how important to see in everyone's heart, actually, Radha and Krishna. And then we have no problem to act nicely towards everyone with respect. <laughs> 